a wonderful paradox that I love to train by. And a paradox is a double opposite. I want my horse to think for himself. I want my horse to listen to me. And that is two very, very opposing requirements. And note how I say think for himself first. Because to me, a horse is a brilliant survivor. He's made it through many, many centuries of lions jumping out of trees on him and all, all the above. He survived chasms, bogs, which is I think why he has a natural worry about water or ditches. And he's still here today, being the most extraordinary animal that he is, able to learn so much depending on what faculty we wish to teach him. I think his thought process is extraordinary. It's different to ours because he's not capable of reason. Apparently humans are, and dolphins and a certain sort of chimpanzee, but every other mammal associates ideas. So for him to think for himself is absolutely crucial and use all those instincts that he's developed over many thousands of years of survival. It's not um, unusual to hear stories of horses that are in a stable and somebody climbs onto the wall between the stables, maybe to take a photograph, maybe to put up um, a drip or something, and the horse sees this uh, movement up on the stable wall and panics and throws himself across the stable, flings himself out of the stable. I've heard of both. Um, and one with really bad results. And that's an instinct coming from ages back of, of a lion in a tree. And I always think of that when, when the horse is being worried by something up and the oh, it's a lion in a tree instinct, you know, let's get him to turn around and look at it or whatever it is. So they, they are incredible survivors. And it's that wonderful survival instinct that I want to encourage. And I can, because horses are so trainable, there's no other animal in the world that does so many different jobs. He is incredibly trainable. I can, to a degree, train that instinct out of him. And I want to be really careful that I don't, because I want that at its highest sensitivity to save his skin and my skin across country. But at the same time as him thinking for himself, he's got to learn that framework of discipline. He's got to learn that he listens to me. He's never walked the course. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know the speed. He doesn't know where to look. He doesn't know the balance he needs for this particular thing that's coming. And one way or another, why should he go to any fence and jump anything? And they do it because they are so amazingly willing. And an awful lot of horses absolutely love whatever job you turn them to. And that, that brings me to the most wonderful story of the horse, um, I'm going to forget his name, that was in the First World War. And Bruff Scott wrote a story of him. And he was, they had horses shot either side. He had the stable roof blown off him. He had so many terrible things happen. He survived. And when he came back, he won two point to points in the Isle of Wight. And then he went to Olympia. And the act to, to display himself, to, to be the star he was, the act before him was Cossacks. And they were going around the other side of the curtain in the arena, cracking their whips. And he went for the curtain because he heard what he thought was gunshot and he wanted to be there because that's where he'd been trained to be. And that to me is such a wonderful example of how horses can be trained to do anything. They are so willing. And if they don't love cross country, and I had one that didn't, just didn't love it. I, couldn't, I thought my love of it would get into him, but it didn't. And so he went straight down and he was very happy. They don't love it, it's not going to be much fun for you. And that's not meaning a horse that's, that's spooky and shy because a lot of horses will start off their life not sure what they're doing. That doesn't mean they don't love it. But once they get their trust in themselves as well as you, and they start to really look forward to it and start to play up at the start and really want to go, and, and that's when you might have to find a bit that works a little bit differently to the one that you brought him up with because he gets, gets really strong and keen. It's, uh, I love to ride cross country because I love that partnership and I love the feeling that the horse loves it. But I really want to train him to think for himself at the same time as listening to me. And I think that is an absolutely crucial paradox of developing your training along.